Handmaking Cycle. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on stream. Uh, you know, yes, uh, not yesterday, I guess. The previous stream was Friday uh, over the weekend there. And we did a little something uh, because it was a dev streamathon. It was a little thing that some people were organizing for, for uh, raising awareness of, of streams. I don't know if it worked at all, uh, but it was, it was something we participated in. And what I did for that as a special event was I showed how to do a little bit of metaprogramming because it's something that people ask about in the stream all the time, all, all, all the time. So I showed how to do uh, a parser in an hour for, par for pre-processing um, your include files. And people seemed relatively happy with that. So I thought what we would do today is just finish up um, some things, logical extensions of what we did on Friday uh, so that you can see them and you know uh, just kind of have a basic understanding of how that sort of stuff works. Uh, I don't really wanna go too far down that rat hole on Handmade Hero because it's kind of like a whole separate space to explore. Uh, and I feel like until you know what you're doing with regular programming, you don't really want to know what you're doing with metaprogramming. It's kind of putting the cart before the horse to a large extent. Uh, but just so that it's out there and, and people kind of understand the basics of it, I'm totally fine with what we did Friday and I'm totally fine with uh, doing a little bit more. So I'll just finish that up today so it's there and then you guys can make of it what you will. Now, if you'd like to follow along at home with this and you pre order the game on handmadehero.org, today's day 207, so 206 is source code. Unpack that in the directory. That's what you wanna follow along with here. If you remember from Friday, uh, we had a little thing here called Simple Preprocessor that I built. Uh, we just build it in line with the game. Uh, and when you run it, uh, it outputs some code, and you can see uh, here I'll run it on our code. Here we are in the code directory. Uh, I'm going to run that uh, oops, that uh, simple preprocessor. And you can see what it does is it outputs uh, this sort of like array of stuff uh, that's, that's based on uh, the types that we annotated in our code. And the way we did the annotation, right, if you remember, uh, so here is handmade sim region. We have a, um, I can't remember what we called it, an introspect, yep got an introspect marker. And, and the way that that works is we basically, we have just a pound define in our handmade.h uh, that basically defines the ways we can mark stuff up. And so right now we just, we, we define this one, introspect params. And all it is, is it's a way to basically define something that will disappear. So it's something that's free for us to put because the C compiler will essentially completely ignore it, uh, which allows us to put it, things like that anywhere that we want. And so what I do here, is I just gave an example of marking a structure for introspection. So when I put that on there, it means that the, our preprocessor will know to read this structure um, and do whatever it's going to do to it. And so what I have it do currently is it spits out uh, some data, as you can see uh, here, this is what it, it produces. And you can see that it, it, these are the members, right, of that structure there. So what I'm gonna do today is just kind of finish up making this into something that might be useful uh, so that you can kind of see how we would do that, right? How we would uh, sort of start to build a little uh, metaprogramming sort of system here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take this information that we have, because remember on Friday, we started with a very uh, specific goal and that was to make sure that we could replace uh, a piece of code here. Where is it? It's debug value. Uh, we just wanted to be able to replace this code where I had manually had to type out all of these entity things it was just to replace that code with something that could be automated so that we'd know that anytime we changed our entity structure, it would automatically update the debug code here, for example. We wouldn't have to do that manually, things like that, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna turn this into a system that would allow us to do some general things in our code uh, that are not exactly designed for optimization or anything like that. That's like I said, more metaprogramming sort of further down the metaprogramming path. All I wanna do is make the simplest thing that I can so that we can start to leverage some metaprogramming features in the game if we wanted to using just this very simple uh, set of things. And so what I wanna do is I wanna basically produce some data that we could read in the game that would allow us to work with our structures in useful ways, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over to that simple preprocessor here and uh, where we output things, right? Uh, where, we're, where we're sort of printing these things out and we do the parse struct. Uh, you can see here we do like this member definition. Here's the members of thing where we say what the members of stuff are and all that stuff. 
Uh, we go through here and we print out uh, these member things, right? And all that sort of stuff. Uh, so what I wanna point out here is that this piece of information, this little thing right, right here, uh, that's printing out this stuff. What we wanna do is we want to start putting in whatever the information is that we might need uh, to be able to work with the members of this struct uh, in a data-driven way, basically, right? And so what we need is first we need a way of saying what like type something is, and we sort of gotten off to a good start here by just introducing like this thing like type underscore world chunk or type underscore uint32 or that sort of stuff, right? So that's good. But uh, if you imagine what we might want to do with this data, right, we have a problem where if you were to, to sort of iterate over this, you would still have no idea how to actually get at any of this information, right? Because if you take a look at what this would tell me, like let's say that I just have this, this I compile this into my game after it gets spit out, right? Well, what this tells me is very limited. It tells me that there is a member called storage index. It tells me that it is a uint32 but I have no idea where in the struct it occurs and I know I have no idea how big it actually is, right? Now, I could guess that it was 32 bits, you know, it was four bytes long because it's a type uint32, so I can maybe take care of that uh, problem with like a lookup table or something. But in terms of where it is in the sim entity structure, I have absolutely no idea because I would have to actually go through and sort of do some kind of accumulation and hope that the compiler didn't do anything weird with alignment. I'd have to know whether I was inside a pragma pack statement, for example, to even be able to compute the offset uh, inside the structure of where that data is. So what I'd rather do is right inside the output, I'd rather output something that will allow me to get that data directly that the compiler can generate for me. And so it's pretty easy for me to do that. I don't know if we ever made a macro for this. I don't know that we did. I don't know that we did an offset of uh, anywhere because uh, I can't remember uh, if that's something that we ever did anywhere else. Uh, probably not. We probably haven't had yeah, any need to do it. Um, but what we can do in here is we can just figure out what the offset of something would be uh, from the structure uh, that we are talking about here. So what we need to do, and there's a couple of different ways we can do this. I'll kind of show you the, the, the sort of janky way first, and then we'll maybe make a way that's a little bit uh, more sort of festive, uh, is when I'm in this parse member, I could pass down the struct token. So I could pass down what the structure actually was. Um, so that in here, I could go ahead and actually use that, right? So uh, I guess I should say struct type token, right? So whatever the structure type is, what I could do is say, okay, uh, take whatever the structure type is, uh, make a pointer, pretend you have a pointer to that, although the pointer is actually just gonna be zero, right? And then off of that pointer, access the actual member itself, right? Whatever that member was. Uh, take the, the um, location of that, right? Like what that value actually is going to be. Uh, that value would actually be the offset of the structure. Because if I start at zero and I go as far as I need to get to get to this member, uh, that's what I would actually have, right? So taking the address of that member, that tells me, you know, if the base pointer was zero, the address of that member tells me where it actually is. Uh, so I can do something like this, and then all I would have to do is again, pass that, that information down. Um, so, you know, I would have to do something uh, like this, struct type token, text length, uh, struct type token, text, like so. Um, and then I just need to pass whatever the struct's actual type is. Here's the name token. I don't have the type token because as you can see, uh, oh wait, no, the name token is that because it is the type, so never mind. So that's what I, I already have. Uh, so I just pass that down. Uh, and now when I run it, in theory, I should uh, get that piece of information, right? Um, that looks wrong. What did I, oops, inserted it in the wrong place is what I did. Let's try that one more time, there we go. Uh, so now you can kind of see the way this would shape up, right? So now we would get the name, which we want. We would get an ID, ID that gives us the type, which we would want as well. And then we also have an offset, so we know where it is, right? So if we start at zero and we go to where old chunk is, that address is going to be the numerical offset from the start of the structure where this thing actually occurred, whatever, you know, whatever it was. If that makes sense. Uh, so that 
is the way that we would start to get some of that debug information in there. I've noticed that I'm missing a semicolon, so let's go ahead and add that semicolon in. If I wanted to be uh, Mr. Looks Pretty About It, maybe I even put some uh, of those in there. And then for good measure, maybe I just go ahead and say, okay, you know what, every time uh, we actually go to do this game, after we compile the preprocessor, uh, maybe I wanna go ahead and do something uh, where I actually do the preprocessing. So we'll go in uh, to where we were before. So we'll go into like the build directory. I'm not sure how we actually have this set up. So I guess we just do it this way, right? Uh, so we, we pop into that handmade code directory. We run the simple preprocessor. Uh, so we do the, uh, the build simple preprocessor.exe like so. And when we run the simple preprocessor, it will output some data. We'll just pipe that output, whatever it is, uh, into handmade uh, generated or something like that, dot h, uh, I, whatever, I don't know what you want to call it, but you know, that, just some file. Uh, so then when we run it, in theory, we will now have a file called handmade generated dot h, uh, and you can now see that we actually have uh, this thing here that is generated by our own generator. And so what we've done here is this now for the first time, you are seeing an actual metaprogramming workflow, right? A metaprogramming workflow is I compile something, I run that something, and then that something uh, can now be actually in, like, included in line with anything that I wanna do from now on. Like that code can actually be used as part um, of, the, of the program, right? And so that's what I'll do. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and, and include that stuff. Uh, I don't really know where I want to include it just yet. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, in include it in here somewhere, I guess. Uh, in fact, I, I guess I'll, I'll do something like this. Maybe we'll have a, a handmade meta.h, right? Um, and in that handmade meta.h, if I come out here, uh, what we can do is we can say uh, that, uh, you know, whatever this thing needed, like this, for example, uh, whatever this, this uh, generated code expects to have, we will define here, right? Uh, so we've got stuff like this, uh, and, and maybe I'll do meta type here just to make it a little bit more clear what's going on, right? Uh, we can just say, uh, we've got the meta type world chunk, you know, we've got the uint32, we've got uh, that bool32, we've got uh, the entity type, uh, we've got, uh, what else have we got? Uh, we've got B3s, and we've got real 32s, and we've got sim entity uh, collision volume group, collision volume group. Uh, and you know what I should probably do too is I could make this a lot easier on myself by just putting meta type in front of it. There we go. There we are. Uh, and uh, okay, collision volume group. Uh, and, uh, you know, meta type, what else do we need? Int32, meta type hit point, uh, meta type entity reference, meta type uh, v2, and meta type real32, right? And so if I have all these and I just say that's like a meta type or something like that, and I say this is a meta type, I say that I've got the name, you know, whatever this thing is, uh, and I say that I've got uh, the offset from the struct. Uh, now, if I want to, I can actually compile this, right? This could be something that gets compiled and, uh, you know, I could put it in here. I don't know exactly how uh, we want to do it, but there's a handmade generate.h and it comes in through the meta system or whatever. Uh, and so that uh, would sort of make our program start to use in a very, you know, not actually doing anything, but actually set up to do something uh, way, the metacode, right? Um, and so there we go. And now you can see that we're actually compiling the code uh, and we now have that member definition, right? Uh, that tells us everything that we wanted to know about the types that are introspected, okay? So here's our handmade generated. It lists like everything that we need to know about that type. Uh, and one thing I should mention that's kind of nice about this is this code is just generated and can now be checked into the project. So that's kind of a nice thing as well because if the meta code generator ever breaks or it uh, stops working or we lose it or who knows what, 
we still have at least one complete working version of the thing to fall back on, right? We, we have a working actual piece of C code we could pretend we just wrote ourselves, uh, forget the generator, and that's kind of nice as well, right? It outputs something that we can save along with the project and distribute if necessary or do anything else we might need to do, right? Okay, so that's, uh, you know, that's that. So uh, now, what, how, do, you know, how would we use that? How would we actually go about doing something uh, useful there? And so what I would say is, let's go ahead and take a look. I don't remember where we ended up on the handmade uh, debug set side of things. But for example, if uh, you know where, where we were at in here, where we were sort of doing the, the debug text out stuff, like this stuff here, right? Uh, so I don't really remember where we were at there, but if we wanted to, we could sort of do something where we maybe, um, where we maybe uh, take a look at how we, we would use this data there, right? So how we might use this data there is, let's say, for example, I want to be able to print out an entity somehow uh, or something like this. Again, I'm not really sure exactly how we want to go about that because we're kind of right in the middle of the debug stuff. So it's not really in a state where we can start using it. We were sort of making a bunch of changes to it and trying to push forwards on some things. It's not really ready for us to start relying on it. If it was, we'd be done. Um, so what I want to do is I want to actually sort of use that, that data from handmade meta to like iterate over some stuff, right? Uh, and so the handmade generated thing, like this thing right here, uh, I could I could just say, okay, I've got this sim entity. I want to be able to iterate over the members of sim, sim entity. Uh, and I could totally do that as long as I actually had an entity. Uh, so the debug text out uh, thing, where do I actually say something like that? Uh, where did I say the compiling thing? Debug text line, there we go. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could imagine doing something here uh, where I did something, maybe I loop through uh, the members of this thing and print out all of the members of a sim entity, like whatever it was, right? Uh, so let's say I took one here and I just said, I've got a sim entity, this is our test entity uh, that we're just gonna create for the purposes of demonstrating that we can loop over it and print things out. Right. Uh, so here's our sim region. Here's some of the stuff that's in there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to set some of the basic things. Like I'll set the distance limit to 10. Right. I'll set the t-bob to 0.1. I'll set the facing direction to like 360 degrees. Who knows? Uh, I'll set the dabs tile z uh, to 5 or 4 or what? Who knows? Right. So let's say I set some of those things. So now I've got a test entity that has those things set. And now I want uh, to print out the values of that, uh, you know, using the debug text line thing or something like that, right? Um, so that's all I, I need to be able to do. Okay. Uh, so if I want to do that, you know what we should probably do next? Let's, we should replace this printf as well. That's the next time we do a fun little thing. That's what we should do is like write our own printf. It's time. It's time. Uh, all right. So if we're going to go ahead and... Uh, print out these values, right? Then, oops, that was not where I meant to put that. And that's not what I wanted either. Try that one more time. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> if I want to print this out, uh, then you can sort of see like, okay, I've got to read over the members, right? So I can just say like uh, member index, you know, uh, goes from zero to however many there are in that type field. So right, this guy right here, uh, however many there were in there is how many I would need to iterate over, right? Then I know that I've got the member definition uh, for all of them by just looking at this array uh, plus whatever the member index is. So I just iterate over the members of the thing and I know that that will be all the members that exist inside the struct, right? Then for every member, I can just look at what type I'm actually you know, talking about here. Um, and for the ones that I know about, I can print those out, right? So I could do like anything that's a uint32. Um, I could do anything that's a bool32, for example. Uh, I could do anything that's a, an int32. I could do anything that's a real32, right? Those are some that would be really easy for me to print out right now. We wouldn't have to write any kind of uh, fancy code for it or anything like that. Uh, so let's say we just take something like this, and then we just go ahead and, and actually print these guys out. Okay, uh, so, all right. Uh, what we would do here 
is to just say, okay, we know what the member name is, right? We know what, what the member of the struct is that we're talking about. We know the member of the struct is whatever the member and the, the, that array that we you know, generated, whatever it says it is, right? Because that, that tells us the information we need. So we know the name. Uh, and then to print out a UN32, I just, now I just need to know um, what's the actual value. And I know I've got, you know, whoever I'm trying to print out, I know I have like the address of the entity, for example, right? So I know I have that. I know I have, uh, you know, that as a pointer so I can start there. And then all I would need to know is how far I would go, right? So assuming I, I cast it to U8, so we're moving in bytes, I just need to know how far from the beginning of the, of the entity that U32 actually is. And of course, that's exactly what the offset tells me. That's what this thing tells me, right? So I would just go however far the member offset is, and now I know that I'm pointing to a uint32. So if I want to print it out, I just dereference it, right? Make sense? So all I did was say start at the beginning of the structure, go however much the offset is, that is the uint32 that we're looking for, print it out, right? Now the exact same thing would hold for anything else, right? Uh, I could do a Boolean that way. I can do an integer that way, totally trivially. I can do a float that way. Again, very, very straightforward. Um, and that's it. Uh, it's so easy, in fact, that you can see it basically works exactly the same every time. So I can even do something like saying that I just have a member pointer. The member pointer is always going to be exactly the same. I just don't know what type I'm actually pointing to until I go through the switch statement. So all I would have to do is this. Right? That's all. I always know the member name. I always know the member pointer. I always know um, everything I need to know in order to print this out. So if I go ahead and compile this, uh, now uh, all I need to do is print it out. So when I've got one of these, I can just say, you know, if text buffer zero. So if we actually printed any, every, uh, anything, everything, whatever, uh, we can go ahead and and print it out, like so. Uh, now I, I should have a way to, you know, sort of debug inspect those things in an automatic way, right? So, okay. So now I run the code, uh, and oops, that's the preprocessor. Let's, let's actually run the actual game. Um, so now I run the code, right? And you can see there that we've got some stuff, flags, distance limit, facing direction, tbob, um, right? Uh, Actually, oh wait, no, flags is something else. What am I looking at? I'm sorry. Distance limit, facing direction, tbob, and abs tile z are the ones we're looking at right there. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, don't ask me. Oh wait, no, that's, those are actually just things that it picked up. Right, because it's gonna print them out just because I never set them. Uh, they're just set to zero. So it just printed out all the things that it knew how to print out. That's kind of fun, right? Uh, so there it is, there's the automated inspection, right? Uh, and the nice thing about this is this right here is totally reusable, right? This piece of code will print out any structure that we want it to, any structure at all, right? So for example, if we want to extend this very trivially, we could just have a thing here, which is like debug dump struct, right? And debug dump struct, dump struct would just take uh, the struct pointer, right? So we know where the struct actually is. Uh, and then we would take, uh, a pointer to this thing, right? So a member definition, uh, member defs, and then we just need to know the number, member def count, right? That's all we needed. We didn't need to know which struct it was that was not at all, and I don't know why that's still there, that was not at all relevant to what we were doing, right? So we can just come in here and say, okay, uh, all we need to do is say, go through however the uh, many these were, you know, that there were, uh, and I guess this is technically just a member count. Doesn't matter whether they're defs or anything else, that's how many there has. Uh, so here's the member defs, right? Generically speaking, just iterate over them. The struct pointer is this thing right here. Uh, and that's it, right? So now debug dump, dump struct will dump any structure that we ever have, full stop, as long as we marked it up for annotation somehow, right? And so we can easily say we want to dump the struct. There's the struct we want to dump. All we need to do is tell it how many of these there are. So there's that uh, and this. Uh, and now we can dump a structure, right? Uh, so if you take a look, and I guess I could have just left that running, but just to prove that it's working right, we run it again. Uh, so there it is, 
In fact, I can just leave it running. We got hot look code reloading, so it doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, that is the basic metaprogramming thing. Now, just to show how powerful that is, uh, you know, this is obviously, if we, if we wanted to, we could augment this really quickly and say, all right, uh, let's say that this is debug text line. Uh, this is our, you know, sim entity test. Uh, so now, you know, if we take a look there, you can see this is sim entity printing out. Let's say now we want to do anything else in our system, anything at all, right? Uh, so we go up here and we say, you know what? I really wish I could dump something else out here. I don't know what it's going to be. What do you guys want it to be? I'm not sure. Uh, let's just say it's the sim region for now, I suppose, right? All we have to do is that. That's it. We just say introspect, uh, and now this thing will be introspected. So when I compile uh, the code, right, um, we get all of the definitions that we want, as you can see. Uh, and the only thing that we have to do is anything that was a new type that was in here that we don't know about, we have to add uh, to our, uh, our, our list in the, the meta thing. Now, even that we don't actually have to do, but I'm kind of saving that. Uh, for the end, for the for the next 30 minutes, what we're going to do. But you can kind of see here, in fact, I guess I can just let the compiler tell me what they are. All we need to do is make sure that those things are actually defined as types. So that's what I'm going to do very quickly. Like you can see here, uh, me doing. There we go. And done. Right? Uh, again, that's really it. You know, uh, now we have the complete definition of those compiled into the game. So now if we wanted to, we could again inspect that with absolutely no work at all. If we had one of these things, uh, like, you know, whatever it was, uh, I don't know, one of these guys, I don't know what we'll set here. Let's say we set these real 32s or something like this uh, and these UN 32s. Uh, so I do a sim region, you know, here's our test region. This pretend this happened somewhere in the game. Uh, and we said there's the test region, right? Uh, so here's the radius, there's the velocity, uh, there's the entity count, uh, max entity count, entity count, whatever, something like this. All we would have to do to dump it is just call the same routine again, right? So literally the sum total of the work it takes uh, to redump that is just calling this routine again, right? That's it. And now you can see that we've got the sim region printing out. We didn't have to write a single line of code, basically. All we did uh, was just ask for that thing to be printed, and it gets printed completely, fully, 100% automatically. Now, uh, as you know, though, or as you've seen, I should say, uh, if we take a look at the process there, there is something very unsatisfying about it, right? And that something uh, is the fact that if you look at, uh, you know, at the code here, every time there's a new type, we have to redefine it um, in our handmade meta. And that's not the most troubling part. You know, that's not great, but it's not the most troubling part. The most troubling part is we don't actually have any way uh, to, to print those out, right? So let's say, for example, excuse me, let's say for example that I went into handmademath.h, right? So I go into handmademath.h and I say, okay, you know what? Um, rectangle, uh, as you can kind of see somewhere in here, probably struct, I don't know where it is, but struct rectangle, there we go. Uh, so rectangle two, right? I just want to say that I want to introspect this, right? I want to introspect that thing. Uh, I want to inspect rectangle two. I want to inspect introspect rectangle three, right? Um, so now the introspector, as you can see, if I reload this, uh, oh, well, you know what? We do need to do one other thing first. I think our, our little uh, test guy doesn't actually um, process all the files, right? Uh, yeah, it does not actually process all the files. Uh, so we actually want to do this, right? Sorry about that. I forgot we're not really doing all the stuff. File names, plus plus file index, file name, file index. Okay. 
All right, so assuming that we actually ran this on all of our code, which is probably what we would do, right, if we were going the full uh, route there. Um, and that's not going to work. OK. And that's not defined here. OK, so assuming we actually run it on our code, uh, which we would need to do, uh, you can see we get our rectangle 2 and our rectangle 3 are now defined, right? So really, if you think about what this means, in theory, we shouldn't actually have to do anything to get those types, right? Like the meta code already knows about rectangle 2, so why am I sitting here having to deal with this extra type, right? Because what I'd have to do, let's say we wanted to inspect that bounds member, right? What I would have to do if we wanted to inspect that bounds member was in here, I'd have to add every time we have a new type like that, right? I have to go in here um, and add it in, right? So I have to go in there and do some nonsense like this, uh, where I say like, oh, right, okay, it's the rectangle. So, you know, it's got, um, uh, a bunch of these things like this sort of a thing or whatever is going to happen. Uh, so I'm saying like, you know, sprint f all that stuff out. Here's the member pointer. So the member pointer uh, points to a rectangle three, you know. Um, uh, so I do the pointer to a rectangle three and now I got to get out like the min.x, right? And I'm doing this whole nonsense uh, like so and like the max.x, right? Okay, uh, and then, you know, then I find, oops, I don't know why I decided that there's going to be a lot of extra member names in there. So at that point, right, uh, I, I could actually view those rectangles, but I had to write all of that code, right? So I had to write all of that code to do that. Now, why am I writing that code uh, when you can kind of see that the meta generator could be doing it for me? right? The meta generator in here already picked those guys up, right? It's got the V2 and the V3 there, right? So really all that should have to happen is this, right? I say, okay, I got to a rectangle three. Let me just do a debug dump struct here, right? I'll use whatever the, the generator said for that thing, whatever that is, right? I'll say debug dump struct of uh, the array count of this guy, those are the members, and the member pointer is the pointer to the new struct that the dump struct should output, right? Make sense? Uh, so, you know, now when I run the code, uh, I should get something that actually automatically outputs uh, that stuff uh, for me, if that makes sense. Although, wait, what happened there? Debug dump struct, rectangle three, member Pointer, why am I not see why am I not seeing that? Uh, oh, I know why. Because it's a V2. Right? We didn't implement these or these. So I still do need one thing. In fact, I should probably do this to save us the, the agony. Right? Meta type V3 like so. Okay, uh, so here we have, I guess I don't really need to do that. Uh, there we go. Okay, sorry for that brief stupidity there. Okay. Uh, so in theory now we're printing that out, although still have some weird thing happening there. Member pointer for the V3, is that correct? Debug dump struct members of rectangle three. When we come through here to print these out, I'm gonna actually set these to something I know as well, just so I can uh, double check that. What should, which member is that? Show me sim region. Show me sim region. Okay, so bounds, uh, min, or, or I guess we could do rectangle, you know, tangle, uh, 
min max, something like that, and then just specify those. So there's the updatable bounds, uh, and there's the bounds. I'm just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. There we go. Uh, so, okay. So, yeah, so I've got some. Can I see that? I've got some nastiness happening there. What is the problem with that? When we hit metatype rectangle three, ah, I undid too much code. Okay. All right, so back to what I was saying. So now we've got the, the, the min max stuff uh, printed out, right? Um, although it looks like I'm one off, yep, x, y, z, there we go. So now we've got that stuff printed out, right? We're calling, we're using the generated stuff to get those types, right? But I still had to write this part right here, right? So basically what's gonna happen here is that's gonna happen pretty much for everything. Now I could do some base types and that wouldn't really bother me. So if I had to do like these two types, so we just have V2 and V3 or something like that in there, um, that wouldn't necessarily bother me. But what would bother me is stuff like this where it's like, okay, you know, suppose I wanna actually have a thing where I can print everything out. Well, if I look at what's in here, okay, I've got like, you know, world chunk and like sim entity collision volume group and entity reference and hit point. I'm gonna have to be like putting all of those in here. So in addition to all of these like sort of more basic ones like rectangle two and rectangle uh, three, I've gotta like put every last stupid one of these, right? I've gotta actually do that code myself, which is not so interesting to me, right? Like that. It's just, again, exactly the sort of thing that I was trying to avoid to a large extent. It looks like there was no rectangle too. That was exactly the thing that I was trying to avoid with the metaprogram in the first place is I want this code to be generated for me. I don't want to have to do it, right? So there's a couple of things we can do there. Right? And uh, the, the simplest and most uh, straightforward one, there's, there's more complicated things you can do. Uh, but the simplest and most uh, uh, straightforward one is actually just declare which ones of these we are actually going to print out ourselves uh, and uh, and and let it go from there or uh, a sort of another another way to do it would just be to say we can have the meta generator perhaps remember all of the things that it has seen and any time it knows that it has the data for something uh, allow that to be something that that gets switch cased right uh, so let me show you what that would look like just again to sort of underscore how this sort of thing tends to work. So let's suppose that I do uh, my sort of read entire uh, contents into file contents into memory and I'll terminate sort of stuff here. Uh, if I was going to do this, let me show you the simplest possible way. This is the way that requires never not actually creating anything inside the meta generator to actually that actually understands what it's seeing. It's still just kind of a macro processor, right? So the simplest possible way to do it is to say, all right, whenever I'm going to see one of these guys, whenever I see a parse struct, I'm gonna take a look at, um, I'm sorry, not a parse struct. Uh, whenever I see, actually, no, that is what I meant. So whenever I see a parse struct, right, I'm going to make note of what that struct actually was, right? I'm going to keep track of just all the ones that I've seen. And then at the end, I'll output something that's going to uh, allow me to process those as sort of switch debug dumps, right? Uh, so let's say, for example, that I just do something here where I kind of have, again, like something, uh, I have no idea, um, you know, uh, 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 struct, scene struct, something I've seen, or like def meta struct, I don't know, right? So I just have a meta struct, all it has is like, what's the name? right, of the meta struct, um, and, uh, and I think that, actually, you know what, that's it. It's just what the name of the meta struct is, right? Like, that's all there is to it. Uh, and maybe even just, you know, something like this where we got meta struct next, and I just say, like, first uh, meta struct, right? Something like that. Uh, so what I can do there is every time I parse a struct, when I see that, what I'll do is I'll just remember that that struct actually existed. Right, so I'll say, okay, I want a new meta struct, um, you know, uh, one of these things. Uh, I'll just grab one, 
uh, however big that is. And again, I'm going to keep this to the end of the program, so you don't need to worry about it at all. Uh, so I just mal malloc one of those. I want to take the name. Uh, I think it's stir. Uh, it's stir. What's the actual? I never use the C runtime library, so I never remember. It's is it? It's not stir copy, is it? Or is it? Is it? I don't know. It's not stir copy. It's um, the thing. There's a thing that like copies and allocates a string, or, or is that just something I wrote? I can't remember. There's one that's like you know, it just allocates the thing. It's not mem copy. Uh, it's not stir stir. It's not stir and cat. I don't know. You know what? I don't even care. It doesn't matter. I'll just write it myself. Uh, so anyway, I want a name. Uh, that's trivial. It's just whatever the. Oh, I don't even need that. I've already got that. Uh, so whatever the name token is for this guy, the text length of that, I just grab that space um, to store it. And then I just say like, okay, write uh, wherever the thing was on the terminate and I'll copy the name in here uh, from, from wherever we were, right? Uh, so we've got, okay, into that name, I will put uh, the, the uh, text and uh, I already know how long it is because I already have that information. So this is basically just me storing this uh, and then I'll just chain it on uh, to what I was doing. Right, uh, so it's all good. And again, this is the, our, since this is external to the thing, uh, we're this is using this isn't using our memory allocator. This is using the base, you know, whatever C wants to use for its its uh, stuff. Uh, I assume this is in memory.h. Don't actually remember, but I assume. So anyway, uh, that gives us a list of all of the structs that we've seen. Right. So now every time we see a struct, we know that we have one. Uh, you know, we, we sort of have a record of it. So at the end of the program, after we've done everything else, uh, I can basically just print out a little thing that's designed to aid us in that automated type discovery process. So I can just say like, all right, let's print out a pom define, which is like handle, you know, uh, meta handle type dump, I don't know, uh, whatever it's going to be, right? Uh, and what we do is we say meta handle type dump, uh, and then we say whatever the type actually was or, or something like this. In fact, I guess uh, if I look and see what we're doing here, right, um, it's just gonna output uh, this thing right here, right? Uh, so really all it needs to do is it just needs to have uh, the member pointer, I guess, is really the only thing that needs to happen. So whatever the member pointer is, uh, that should pretty much do it, right? So you call meta handle type dump, you give it the member pointer, and all this is gonna do is just generate all of these cases for us automatically. So we don't have to bother doing it ourselves because we're just that lazy. Uh, okay, so in here, I gotta loop over these guys. So I've got my meta struct, um, I start with it, and I say uh, first meta struct, I loop until uh, it's done, right? Once I have those, Inside here, I just need to output uh, what is this, essentially this exact case, right? I just need that for each one of these. Uh, so in here, we just do uh, something like this, one, two, three, four. We just do something that looks like that. Right? Uh, where I say the type name in there, so meta type, whatever that is, uh, is just gonna again happen every time here, right? Like that. Uh, and then that member type is, uh, a member pointer is again the parameter, so off it goes, right? Uh, and in here, what I can do as well is I can put in the back, the double backslash if necessary. Uh, so I can basically say like, all right, continue the macro if necessary by saying, if meta next is equal to something, meaning there's gonna be something next, uh, put in that slash, otherwise leave it blank. So there it is, uh, that'll do that for us. Uh, all I have to do is actually pass now the actual type name, so meta name, uh, and I've got to pass that twice, because it or three times really, because it uses it three times, uh, and that's that's really all there is to it. So now if I go back and take a look at what's in my generated code, uh, you can see that down at the bottom we now have uh, meta code, which does exactly the stuff that I wanted it to do. Right? Uh, it automatically handles any type that we might have seen, um, uh, so we don't have to. 
And furthermore, we could also imagine doing that for the other part of the process that we haven't seen yet. Uh, you could imagine if you were really trying to do this the whole way, you could actually do something where it spits out uh, this array as well, right? Uh, you could imagine that happening. So, if you want it to be tight bound that way, you can actually do that uh, as well. But let's just take a look at how this works exactly. So once we have that, we now have the ability to inject into our debug code, right? Uh, we have the ability to inject into there uh, sort of our own, you know, our own set of switch statements that do everything that they need to do, right? Um, so that's all right like that. Uh, so what we can do is just say, all right, uh, instead of handling rectangle three, we don't need to handle that anymore. That just gets handled uh, by implicitly because that was a type uh, that was seen, right? Uh, and then of course, we obviously have to make sure that those are actually in here though, at this point, uh, everything. The, the meta generator sees has to be defined in there. Uh, and now when we run the game, we see that you know that stuff gets printed out for us. And furthermore, some more new stuff that was never getting printed out before is getting printed out for us. Now, what is that stuff? Well, it's a little hard to read it uh, at the moment. So what I'd like to do is just go ahead and, and make one slight modification to this. Uh, and that is that inside here, I want to add the concept of an indent level uh, if possible, right? Uh, so what we could do is say something like, all right, uh, you know, when we're printing this out, uh, there is going to be an indent level. Uh, that indent level is like, you know, uh, care star text buffer base, maybe, right? We would just say, okay, uh, we start text buffer at the base of it. And this is just totally hacked because, like I said, we'll probably make this print out something real in a second, but just for sake of doing the part that we care about doing right now and not focusing on other stuff. Uh, we start at text buffer, at text buffer base. Uh, we then do like a for uh, indent level equals zero uh, or indent equals zero. Indent is less than indent level, you know, plus plus indent. And so this way we can go through and just say, okay, however much the indent level is, uh, we'll do something where we just like uh, add some spaces in there, right? Right, like we just add some spaces uh, to sort of push it uh, forwards, if that makes sense. Uh, and then we add an L terminator and do the rest of the stuff normally. And so that would allow us to say, okay, there's an indent level that gets passed here. Uh, and every time we go down a level of indent, you know, we, we increment it by one or something like that. So here, uh, and in fact, we could just say when you call debug dump struct, you know, that's indent level is set to zero, but then inside the simple preprocessor, when we pass that indent level, it always passes the indent level, um, you know, plus one or something like this, or maybe like the next indent level is something that it passes, for example, and that's just a, a parameter to the macro, right? Uh, so then, you know, in here, we just say, what are you complaining about, Mr. Man? Right, sorry about that. There you go. Uh, we did what, what happened? Size on something did its thing. Oh, right, that is, that is, uh, I hate this SNPrintf thing. Uh, something like this. Are you happy now? Mr. Gets in the way of me trying to give examples. We really need to write our own one of those. There's nothing worse than a whiny C compiler. Okay, uh, so if we go ahead and make that happen, so we just say, okay, uh, yeah, however big text buffer base was, uh, we that's how much we start with, uh, and then we can subtract away from that. Well, I guess what I could do is just say uh, text buffer base plus however big text buffer base was, minus text buffer, that's how much is left. Uh, okay, so that oops, should allow me to finish the thing that I was actually trying to show you. Uh, let's see, can I convert from three to size t? What? Can I convert 
argument three. Oh, is this that? God, this was so annoying last time. What was this thing complaining about? I cannot remember. It's something ridiculous, like we tried to set it to the right stuff, but it didn't like it. You know what I'm talking about? It is, I hate this thing. You know, people ask me why I don't use the C runtime stuff. It's because of this garbage. It's like, I don't ever want to have to think about these sorts of things. I just want you to do what I tell you to do. God. All right. What is, what is this that you're telling me? SNPrintFS, which is there. Caristar, size T, size T. So when I don't pass one of those, I have to pass this twice. Is this what you're telling me? Stupid thing. I remember us going through this already once. Yes, apparently it was. Fantastic. Yes, such a productive use of my time. Thank you. All in the name of security, which we are not concerned about in any way. Remember, the operating system can be hacked by a font file. So why anyone would care about how Handmade Hero handles things securely, I have no idea. Uh, but that's, you know, beside the fact, it's fine. Don't worry about it, it's totally fine. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I just wanted to make an indent level thing here so I could do that. That was all we were trying to do, nothing else. Um, so now, in theory, uh, we should be able to read this a little bit better. Uh, and so here you can kind of see that happening. Now there's something that we probably would want to do here, uh, which is to say that we'd want to show which member it was that we were actually outputting at any given time when we output things uh, like this. So for example, uh, inside that meta handle type, uh, thing where we do this kind of case, we would probably want to do something uh, where we would sort of do a debug text line first, uh, where we would say, okay, uh, we're going to output something here uh, that tells you what the member actually was. Uh, we could actually, I suppose, uh, put it uh, sort of as, a, as an adjunct into this thing, but, you know, uh, first things first. So if we wanted to say what that actually was, we can just say debug text line. And we can say whatever that member name was here. Uh, again, this is kind of a hack uh, for until we get this into the hierarchy. Uh, but you can just so you can kind of see at this point like what we're actually looking at here, right? Uh, so now you can see when we print it out, we get stuff like okay, there's the bounds. It automatically jumped into the rectangle thing. There's the updatable bounds. There's any count. Here's entities. Entities happen to be array of sim entity. So we actually start printing out what's in that array, right? Um, which is again, not actually something that we want to do, uh, but it's something that we could do. And the reason that we don't want to do that yet is because we're not actually handling array. We don't handle pointers in the meta code at all. Uh, so this is totally erroneous here, right? But this will start to actually do what we want it to do right down to the point where, you know, in theory, if we wanted to, we could uh, start to, to print out a relatively complex type in a semi-automatic fashion, right? So if I try to find something, I don't know what would be a better uh, struct in here, like, I don't know, uh, handmade asset.h, maybe, or something like this. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think of, of what in our code would be a good example of something that doesn't require like arrays and stuff quite yet, uh, since that's a little bit outside of, of sort of what we've done inside the generator. Um, maybe there's some other stuff in some region, I suppose, I'm not uh, entirely sure. Uh, so yeah, so we're printing out sim entity, um, and yeah, so most of these things are by pointer. Well, entity reference is a good example. So entity reference we could do, right? Um, although I guess it's a union, so maybe not. Like I say, the, like a lot of these things just require us to upgrade our parsing, or I should say our understanding of the, ah, world position. So there's one, right? Uh, so if I go into handmade world and look at world position, right? Uh, so here's kind of a good example. If I want to, I could introspect this. Uh, I don't know what category that would be, probably world, something like that. So if I want to int introspect that, I could totally do it. And in theory now, when we output our entities, it should say what their positions are, 
right? And it should not only output chunk X, chunk Y, and chunk Z, but it should also know to, to go inside this V3 and get that out as well. Um, and again, in order to do that, all I have to do, the only thing I have to do that I, we haven't done yet is make sure that uh, inside our preprocessor, we're actually processing uh, all the files, which again, like I said, I don't actually do yet. Um, but I can just manually add it, right? And so now I didn't do anything, right? I didn't add any code. I just recompiled, that's it. And you can see that now our entity printout, which is right here, this is our sim entity. You can see that it just prints out that origin struct. It just totally nailed it, right? It outputs the X, the Y, the Z, and the offset, right? It knew the offset was a V3. Again, totally automated everything uh, nice and fancy, right? Um, oh, wait a second. No, I lied. I totally, li I totally lied. That's not what happened. That's actually inside the sim region. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, sorry. I guess for some reason I thought we were talking about the sim entity, but the sim entity doesn't have one of those. So yes, it totally nailed it, but I was confused. So there's the world position right there, right? And it prints it out automatically. And it's smarter than I am because it actually knew where the thing was and I didn't, right? Um, so yeah, so that's right uh, how that sort of thing works. It's again, pretty straightforward, uh, not really, uh, None of it's rocket science. It's just taking a little time to figure out how this sort of stuff goes. Again, you can, you can sort of take this a lot further than what I'm doing right now, uh, but it just gives you kind of an idea. Hopefully you can sort of see for yourself how this sort of thing would progress and, and go a little further down. Um, if we wanted to extend this a little bit more, uh, you could see how like some of these things that are single pointers, uh, we could pretty easily um, handle just single pointers and stuff like that in a fairly hacked way, or we could do something a little bit more fancy for them. But you know, if you want to do something in a pretty hacked way, it's pretty easy to even hack pointers in there. It's just going to do an additional dereference uh, before it actually looks at something. So for example, let's say we wanted to start targeting whatever this thing is, sim entity collision volume group, right? Uh, sim entity collision volume group is this thing. Um, so you know, I want to introspect this. I don't know why, who care? I have no idea, we're doing some things. I don't know, so I just started inspecting everything because I'm crazy and I'm doing stuff and it's a disaster and whatever. So I'm introspecting some stuff and I say that I want these two things introspected, right? Uh, and I go ahead and compile it. Uh, and uh, you know, like I said, we, haven't, we didn't go the full Monty there and, and actually put in the thing that generates those uh, generated guys, but we could, obviously, if we wanted to, it should be pretty obvious by now how you would do that. Um, but other than that, right, it starts to generate all this stuff for us, and that's all really great. Uh, but when we go to actually run this thing, uh, what you will notice is like, okay, so there's the total volume, and it looks like it's doing everything correctly, um, and it's fine. Uh, but what you will see is that uh, actually, in fact, you can already see it even before, I don't even need to give a demo. What you'll see is that it actually prints out the wrong data. And the reason for that is because it's looking in the wrong place, right? Because that thing is a pointer. So inside that sim region, right? Um, when we are pointing to the collision volume, that is an actual pointer, but our meta, uh, our, our, our preprocessor doesn't actually use pointers at all yet, right? It doesn't, uh, it, it knows that it saw it, like I did it when we wrote the parsing, you can see that it actually has an is pointer there, but doesn't actually do anything with is pointer. So it doesn't matter that it saw that there was an asterisk, it's not actually gonna use that for anything, right? And so there's a lot of different ways that you could, uh, you know, that you, that you could kind of like start to approach this. Uh, the simplest possible way, if we were just literally hacking it uh, all to pieces, is that member, sort of that member concept there, um, you can, you can sort of just have some flags that say to do something, right? You can say here, like a member definition flag, right? Uh, and you would say, you know, uh, meta flag, you know, meta member flag, something like this, um, underscore is pointer, right? And again, this is really, the reason this is so such a hack, like I was saying, is because it doesn't support like pointers to pointers, right? There's, you can see why there's a lot of reasons that would be bad. Um, but point being, if you're just, just to show what the idea is, we do like, okay, if it's a pointer, then we put one of those flags in, otherwise we just put zero in there. Uh, and now when we print this out, uh, we would actually have that information inside the generated stuff. So you can see here, anytime there was a pointer like to the volumes or things like that, it tells us that it is a pointer. Uh, so now that we know. 
And once we know that it's a pointer, then that means that inside the thing where we actually print everything out, uh, that gives us the opportunity to actually dereference the thing first before we're actually going to do anything else, right? Uh, so what we would do uh, is when we're actually doing debug dunk struct, when we get out our member and we look at that uh, member pointer, right? We would just first say, well, if the member itself was flagged that way, so you know, if we believed it to be a pointer because the, the generator told us that was so, uh, then what we could do is take member pointer uh, and actually dereference it once, right? So we could say, well, member pointer is a, actually we're going to treat it as a pointer to a pointer and then dereference that pointer. So now we've read like one, one pointer deep, one more pointer deep, right? Uh, and then what we can do is we can also test on member pointer. So we can just say like, okay, you know, if it's null, maybe we just skip it, you know? Uh, we, don't, we don't draw that one or something, right? We, we skip that all together uh, and we move on. So, you know, we do something like this where we say, okay, prep the buffer uh, and then just keep going, right? Uh, so then when we actually do this printout, then you can see this starts to make more sense. It's not showing up at all now because it looked and it saw that the pointer was null. So it doesn't actually actually do any printing out there. Uh, but now if I was to go into our test where we're actually printing these out and I actually filled in one of those pointers, one of the pointers that's in sort of the meta stuff uh, that I was talking about here. Um, so inside handmade sim region, I don't even remember which ones it was. I guess it was collision, sim collision volume group. So, okay, so inside our test entity, right? If we set a collision equal to something, so collision is going to be equal to uh, test uh, collision volume group. Uh, so where is that? That's uh, sim entity collision volume group, that right here, right? Uh, so I'm going to actually make one of these guys first. Uh, and I'll just set his parameter something. So, okay, uh, he has a total volume, the total volume offset P, uh, you know, equals, I don't know, 987, something like that. Uh, test collision volume group dim uh, equals uh, 456, or something like this. Um, and then the test entity, uh, what, no, total volume, blah. Okay, there we go. Uh, and then like the other stuff, like the volume count, volume count equals one, uh, volumes e uh, would equal the volumes, right? Uh, sim entity. Collision volume, uh, like so, volumes, right? And in here, it'd be the same stuff. It'd just be like, okay, uh, yeah, these are gonna be like, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on, right? Whatever. Uh, so now, you know, if you look all of a sudden, all I did was tab back and you can see that all of that information is totally reflected properly uh, and all of it's there and that's all great. The only problem obviously with this, again, is like we taught about pointers, but we didn't really teach it about counted pointers. So for example, if I was to say 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and say that the volume count was two, well, if we had a magical thing, uh, it would show up, but you can see that there's only one volume actually listed under volumes. Instead of two, it only lists the first one. That's because all it does is it just sees that it's a pointer. It doesn't know that this member tells it how many of those there are, right? And so you can imagine lots of ways that we would do that. Uh, hopefully you can see uh, the most general one, for example, that you could do is uh, inside uh, the sim region code, for example, we could mark it up by saying something like this. Um, on this on this guy, uh, you know, we could say something like uh, introspect or or like a counted pointer uh, volume count, right? Uh, and then it would know, the generator would know that, um, and inside uh, handmade.h where we define our introspection features, uh, we would just say uh, 
how that worked, right? Um, so that's, that's how that goes. Now, of course, if we actually did that, as you can see, we have a problem, which is the, gener the, the parser itself has to be aware that those things are there, right? It has to be looking for them. And so inside parse member, one of the things that it has to do is look to see if the first thing that it gets uh, is going to be one of those counted pointer things, right? And then it has to actually process it and act on it. But obviously you're gonna have to do that anyway because in order for the thing to work, it would have to have pars parsed it, you know? Um, so obviously uh, that has to happen. But hopefully that gives you a pretty broad overview of how the basics of metaprogramming work uh, like I said, I don't want to cover it in too much more detail because I think you've got everything you would need now to like go off and start building stuff. Um, and, uh, and really mostly what it's about from this point forwards is instead of this thing, uh, instead of the simple preprocessor being kind of like a hack where it's just like a, it just kind of, it's just like a thing that runs with the program and spits out some stuff. What we would actually do here is we'd, we'd build up sort of like an abstract syntax tree or a data structure, we, we build up some thing that represents all of the information that we've parsed. Then we do a bunch of operations on it in that metaform and then we would spit it out. And that would allow us to do a lot more powerful stuff like it, seeing what things were where and how many we knew about and how big they were. We could do all sorts of stuff, right? And you can start to do more powerful operations on it. And that, that becomes more the real metaprogramming. This is more just basic introspection, right? Um, but you can build up more powerful metaprogram features from there. Uh, so I think that should hopefully do it um, and give you pretty much everything you need to go explore it if you want to. Uh, and uh, yeah, there you go. So let's go ahead and go to the Q&A for a little bit. Uh, I'll just take some questions. And uh, But like I said, I, I think it, it should be pretty clear, you know, there's kind of a, there's an infinite number of things you could go do now, I think, with that information. Like, it's pretty obvious how you can just keep going from there. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Hopefully, uh, for people who were, you know, mostly interested in the metaprogramming, they've now got everything they need to do their own explorations on that. As necessary. Colonel Dragon says, so when you set, when you say you've built up multiple layers of metaprogramming, do you mean your metaprograms output things like what we wrote today? Uh, so I, Colonel, I'm not sure I understand what you, what you mean by like what we wrote today. Uh, can you can you possibly rephrase the question? And NXSY, when you say isn't offset of safe to rely on, um, I don't know. We could find out. Let's see. So if I'm in the middle of this code, uh, and let me make sure I get the syntax right for offset of. Uh, so if I do an offset of, uh, which would be that, uh, in the middle of this code, and I did this, and I said, uh, what's something in here? Type, what would the compiler say? Uh, type is not, oh, you're correct, it's not. So that does look pretty safe. Uh, I don't know if I actually needed to, it looks like I need to include standard def.h for that. Uh, so if that isn't the case, and I guess let me see if it is or isn't the case. Um, if I'm in handmade.h platform, uh, let's see. So if I did it here,
Uh, so I would say no. Uh, it looks like it's not safe to rely on because basically you're going to have to, you're going to need another pound include. So that seems like a bad idea to me because you never want to introduce a piece of code that depends on a header file if you don't have to, in my mind, an external header file. Uh, so, so I would say no, I, I would not, um, I would not do that. I would not choose to do that. Uh, but you know, if that's, uh, that's other people's uh, guess, I guess that's other people's idea. Block 238, someone said that the string function you were looking for was called stirdup. Yes, that's, I think that is the one I'm looking for. It's been so long since I've used it, I can't remember, but yeah. Uh, I think, but I, yeah, I think that is it. Gary Johansson in the episode of the Devin Casey show called The Wolf Doesn't Want to Come Anymore. You mentioned that you use metaprogramming techniques to make up for modern language shortcomings. Curious what functionality you have used metaprogramming to achieve that you would have found prohibitive in modern languages. Can you suggest any specific usages to pursue for either programmer robustness, optimization, etc.? Um, I guess what I would say is I, I actually don't know of anything other than basic arithmetic that isn't better in metaprogramming. There's only two types of things Two types of code that, other than arithmetic that I think of right now, ones that I am currently metaprogramming and ones that I just haven't had time to metaprogram yet, um, to build metaprogramming systems for. But I would not say that there are specific things that I metaprogram. It's more that I see everything as a metaprogramming problem and the only things that aren't getting metaprogrammed right now by me are things that I haven't had time to move to that. So the only stuff that doesn't get metaprogrammed at the moment that I wouldn't metaprogram is like really, really basic. Like, oh, this is a thing that is so, is so only ever exists in this one way. Um, but, but almost everything should be metaprogrammed in my mind. I, I pretty much think exclusively in terms of metaprogramming. And actually I'm frustrated a lot of times because I haven't had chance to really sit down and build as many metaprogramming things as I might want. Uh, but someday I'll get there. Chrono Dragon, to rephrase, are your multiply layered metaprograms outputting further metaprograms, or is it a single layer that has enough complexity to be considered more than a single pass? Not sure how to phrase. I was mostly trying to prompt further discussion of what you've mentioned previously. Uh, yeah, at the moment, I don't... F I almost... I almost uh, did one where I metaprogrammed the metaprogramming thing. Uh, but I found that it was just a little too dangerous. So at some point, I suspect if I really like had the like stomach for it, I would go ahead and do uh, metaprogramming like, you know, I'd metaprogram the metaprogram. But I think the problem is I've never had a chance to sit down and focus exclusively on metaprogramming for like two or three years. So I've never gotten my metaprogramming stuff up to like a really high level of quality where I'd be willing to start metaprogramming to relying on the metaprogramming thing always being there, you know? Um, so I try to keep the top level metaprogramming layer written in just like straight C so I know I can always rebuild it anywhere easily. Um, so yeah, I would actually probably like to be able to metaprogram my metaprogramming layer because it's actually a pain. It's, it's actually really annoying that I can't leverage the metaprogramming layer features inside the metaprogramming layer because it would simplify things. James Whitman, odd offset of is defined in MSVC's type standard f.h and is specified in C89 as belonging to that header. Did I miss something? Uh, no, you just, the so I don't, like using the C runtime library. At work, I don't use the C runtime library at all. I don't use any headers actually. Uh, there are no, in, in, our current, in our current build of our game at Molly, there are no header files that were not written by me. Um, 
And well, I guess, and we also, I think we use stbtruetype.h. So there is one that was written by Sean. Uh, and then the rest were written by me. There are no other header files. Uh, so I prefer things that do not rely in any way on any of that stuff. Uh, so if it's free for you to just do it yourself, which offset of is just, it's just what I did, right? Um, and furthermore, I suspect, although I could be wrong about that, but I suspect, let's see here, uh, stop running the game. If I go to our test project here that I made for, Yes, please, Visual Studio, take several seconds to open a text file. Um, if I did an offset of, right, and I said, like, you know, I don't know, Win32 window, or Win32 find data, something like that, right? And I said, see file name. Uh, I assume I could do go to definition, uh, but I don't really know. Uh, so yeah, so okay. So what you can see is basically if you were to use offset of, all you would be doing was introducing a header dependency for exactly the code that I wrote. Like it's just the stu, it does exactly the same code. So all it is, is it's like, it's like when you define zero null to be zero, you're just, you know, or you include a header file to get null. It's like, just use the thing, you know, and like reduce the number of dependencies in my mind. Because this is not, this is not doing anything for you. Um, because there already is C syntax for this operation and that is what it is, right? And if you don't like that syntax, then just make a macro that is the syntax you want. Um, but I don't like introducing dependencies on headers for no reason because they always, always, always come back to ruin your life. Um, especially if those headers have anything to do with Microsoft. Benjamin, based on what Jonathan Blow has so far, do you think JAI will have the metaprogramming capabilities that you'd want? If not, what do you think it is missing? Uh, he has not actually demonstrated much of the metaprogramming capabilities yet. In fact, I think he's still working on the abstract syntax tree modification stuff. So I actually, uh, I don't think even he knows quite yet exactly what will be in there for that. So it's a little premature to say. Um, I mean, I, I feel like knowing John, he will probably make it fairly complete. So even if he does not add all the meta, meta programming like features I might want, I suspect he will probably make it such that I could add those features in the meta programming, uh, in the actual program itself, which is all I really want. Like I don't need him to do that work for me. I just need him to expose the ability for me to do that work and I can then build up my own like library uh, and that would work. Paul Smith, you said in a previous stream that you don't really program in C anymore. You basically program in Casey Lang. Does that refer to your metaprogramming tools or is there more to it than that? Yeah, that refers to the metaprogramming tools. D7 Samurai, you're not using header files for OpenGL Direct 3D? Uh, correct, I do not use header files for OpenGL Direct 3D. Have you worked with any functional languages, Haskell or maybe Scala? Um, only, the only one that I uh, have seen much of is OCaml. Um, I, I have not ever, ever uh, even so much as I think read a line of code in Haskell or Scala, but I have, uh, I think I read a whole book on OCaml actually. I never did anything serious with it though. I mean, I didn't like, you know, I never shipped a library in it or, or any kind of commercial product. Law 238, maybe a bit off topic, but going along with the master spy thing, have you ever done a stealth game 
And if so, what particular programming challenges do stealth mechanics bring that you don't usually have to deal with? Uh, that's really more of a game design, game code question, which is not really my thing. I, I mostly do game technology and, and stealth mechanics. I mean, the, the one thing that I would say is that, you know, um, sometimes, depending on what you're talking about when you say stealth game, like for example, the team that did Thief the Dark Project at Looking Glass did a lot of work on sound propagation. And sound propagation is a good example of something that probably wouldn't be so important uh, in circumstances where you weren't talking about like very careful stealth game sort of things. And so my assumption is that, uh, you know, as far as game technology is concerned, there might be some issues like that. That said, I have never been on a team which had to do something like that. Uh, that is not, that's not an experience I've ever actually had, but I could see that being true. And I know it was true of the, of the folks at Looking Glass. Uh, they did a much, much more um, complex sound propagation system for Thief the Dark Project than anyone else was doing at that time for any other first person uh, shootery kind of title like Quake or anything like that. Uh, maybe a bit off topic. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, is the syntax of case lang still very close to C? Um, the, the like, the nitty, the nuts and bolts of it are, uh, it's more the high, higher level stuff that isn't. Insofar as your metaprogramming tools sound very useful, will you ever open source them? Maybe in your will, if nothing else. Um, yeah, I would like to, uh, I would like to at some point release them but I think it's going to probably depend a lot uh, what format it takes, like what happens over the next five years or so. Um, you know, for a while I was thinking maybe I would do my own language sort of thing that incorporated them, but I wasn't really sure about that. And so now that John is doing uh, his language, you know, I, I kind of want to wait a little while and see how that shakes out. If that turns out to be a really good thing, uh, then, you know, maybe I could just you know, I might even be able to ship it as a library. Like here's here's all my metaprogramming stuff that just ships as like a JAI library, you know, like you just you just grab casey.jai and then you can do the same stuff that I'm do doing that it would it would work in that or whatever. But Shusa, will you write your own installer for handmade here or just zip it and be done with it? Um so for installers, I think probably it would depend on what the requirements are of the target systems at that time. I mean, in general, I prefer to ship things that don't require an installer, but sometimes you're, it forces you to do one so that you can like register something with Windows or whatever that has to happen, that's a requirement. Uh, so I think basically, you know, installers, uh, I don't consider that super much part of the project. I don't care what we do for the installer of Handmade Hero, so we'd probably just do whatever was most expedient. If we can just have something that's as simple as it's an executable and so, you know, we just can put an executable on Steam, you run the executable and it runs and there doesn't have to be an installer, that'd be my first choice. Um, but, you know. How about writing a Casey approved GUI debugger for JAI? Um, you know, if I had time to write a debugger, I would have written one already. Um, right, like I would have written one just for C even, uh, but I, I just haven't had time. I don't have time to even write the stuff that I'm supposed to be writing, let alone extra stuff, right? Like, uh, um, you know, like on our game project now, you know, we don't have a lot of money you know, we're not like a rich company. So, you know, I end up doing a lot of stuff that's not even programming. Like I haven't, I haven't probably programmed anything at Molly Rocket in like three weeks because I had to do a bunch of artwork and stuff. Um, that's just like the reality of, of uh, how it goes, so. James Widman, I'm looking forward to additional visualizers in the debug view, e.g. a small grid view with a dot or line from 00, 0 to represent a V2 along with the decimal digits. Do you think that would be worthwhile? 
Um, generally, no. I don't think that specifically is worthwhile. Uh, what I was going to do, and I, I mentioned this, I kept saying the word diagramming. Uh, usually what works a little bit better is if you just write little diagramming instructions inside uh, the debug, like inside as debug code inside your code and have those come up in the debug thing, uh, which is what I'd like to do. And the reason for that is what you'll find is typically vectors only make sense in reference to other vectors. And you want to sort of have a bunch of information there that sort of says, here is the diagram that I'm trying to like construct. Uh, and so please like make that for me. So you typically need a little bit more um, just putting like for a V2, just showing like what direction it goes. I mean, yeah, maybe it's a little bit better than nothing, but for the most part, it's really not that useful. Gary Johansson, do you ever meta program the Sims stuff and the job queue? The Sims stuff and the job queue. Um, so job queues are a little bit of a um, tough subject at this point because uh, the code base at Molly Rocket actually isn't as multi-threaded as it should be at this point. Uh, and part of the reason for that is very long and involved. And uh, I'm kind of putting it off uh, because in this particular case, uh, we can. Uh, and there's some things I wanted to kind of do with it. Uh, so in some sense, the answer is yes, I probably will be metaprogramming a lot of that. And that's one of the reasons that I'm not doing it right now is because I haven't had a chance to build some of the metaprogramming things I wanted for that. Um, but as for sim stuff, uh, no, I don't generally metaprogram stuff that's very mathy. Like I don't generally metaprogram stuff that's just like math, you know, physics or whatever, because I find that C uh, and C++ operator overloading is usually enough to make that work okay. And while there are a bunch of things that I might want there, they're kind of like well further down the road uh, from where I'm at in terms of the metaprogramming infrastructure I have at the moment. So I could envision, you know, uh, that being a reasonable thing to metaprogram later, but uh, for for right now, I don't. I'm not really in a position to address those things any in any in any degree of efficacy that would make it worth doing those in metacode instead of just just in regular code. Okay. Uh, Vasilas, is there any feature you would add to JAI? Um, you know, I really, I'd like to uh, withhold, or not withhold, but rather postpone answering any kind of speculative features about JAI, um, because honestly, like, uh, you know, I haven't even written a line of code in JAI, right? John is the only one who has JAI. I don't know anything about it other than just what I absorb from watching his demos. You know, that's, that's it. Um, so saying, you know, would I add this feature or that, or what do I think of X? It's like, you know, I don't know. Um, I like his attitude. I like his approach. I trust John and I think he's a good programmer. So I assume that most things work well, but there's not really much I can do um, in terms of giving any concrete suggestions about JAI because programming is a very, active process and you know if you showed me the spec to C++ and you said is this a good language or a bad language right I mean at best I could probably tell you if I just grabbed it I'd be like well it's certainly not concise right but until I actually write some stuff in it and have several years of experience with it it's very difficult for me to say C++ sucks right now I know that C++ sucks like now I know that C++ sucks because I've had plenty of experience with it and I know that it sucks and I can tell you all the ways that it sucks. Um, but you can't just look, you know, at, at some cursory things about a language and kind of say, you know, it's good or bad. You need to really, you need to ship a game in it or something, right? You need to do the work. 
you need to actually do that work. Uh, and so all I can really say about JAI until I start actually writing things in it, which I assume I, I will try, I will um, do some experimenting, you know, when John decides to make it uh, into a beta or whatever he does, until I've actually had that experience of writing with it and seeing what actually causes me problems, what actually uh, gets me speed wins, what, what actually, you know, how it actually um, plays out. There isn't anything constructive I can say other than I'm really happy that John is trying it. And because I have a lot of respect for him, I suspect it will come out well. But, you know, beyond that, all I can say is, I, I don't know. Who knows? You know? There could be all kinds of, like, things in JAI right now that are just really bad ideas that I would have no idea that they were because until I actually go to do something and go, oh my God, that's awful. It's totally makes it hard to do all the stuff I do. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't know. And so uh, I think that's probably the earliest I can really start to give concrete opinions about JAI, like what would I add? What would I remove? What would I have done differently? Anything like that, I, I, it's just so premature at this point. All right, I think the stream has ended. The stream has ended. I'm going to go ahead and close it down. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. Uh, it's been a pleasure coding with you, as always. So hopefully, combined with Friday's stream, this stream gave you kind of an idea of how you can actually use uh, something like introspection in your actual code, if that is something that you choose to do. Uh, so now you've kind of got that and you can decide whether that makes sense for you and whether you like that sort of thing or whether you don't. Uh, like I said, it's not something that we'll probably pursue too uh, vigorously on Handmade Hero in general uh, because I'd rather show sort of uh, the base layer of programming first um, because I kind of consider metaprogramming to be sort of like a thing that you do after you're already done, you know, after you've done something manually, then you can think about how to do it automatically. Uh, but typically you don't really want to put the cart before the horse there and learn metaprogramming along with your programming because I feel like that's, you know, if you, if you don't really have a super solid understanding of the first part, it's, it's kind of uh, not such a good idea to jump to the second part. But it's out there now uh, and we can make some light use of it in Handmade Hero. So we will, for example, uh, we could totally use this stuff uh, if we wanted to, to aid in our debug dumping or anything else that we might want to do. Uh, so that's it uh, for today. If you want to follow along at home, you can always do so by pre-ordering the game on handmadehero.org. The game comes with a source code, so you can follow along night by night uh, and uh, just play around with the, the code, see, see what you can learn from it. Uh, we also have a Patreon page if you want to support the video series. It's always much appreciated. We have a forum site you can go to ask questions. And there's also an annotated episode guide up there that you can uh, look at uh, if you want uh, an easier way to watch some of the videos than, than on YouTube. It's got kind of good jump lists and stuff like that in there. We have a tweet bot that tweets the schedule at you. So if you'd like to catch the stream live, that's the easiest way to do it. Just take a look at the tweet bot. It will tell you. Uh, and I will also tell you that uh, tomorrow night we will be right back here at 8 p.m. Same time, same channel. Uh, and... There is a special stream on Thursday. Uh, we will be 8 p.m. today, 8 p.m. tomorrow, 8 p.m. Wednesday. But Thursday, we will actually start a little earlier. I think it's going to start at 7, 8, uh, 7 p.m. It'll say so. Uh, the tweet bot already speed the schedule, so whatever it says is correct. Uh, but after, immediately after the Q&A of Handmade Hero, uh, there's going to be a special thing that me and Sean McGrath are doing. Sean McGrath, uh, you may know as uh, one of the main programmers on N++. Uh, previously, he also made the game Dyad. Uh, and he is uh, oftentimes on the chat, actually, as SSS McGrath. Um, he asked me to sort of have uh, not really a debate, but sort of a devil's advocate thing, because his next game is going to be a F2P game. And he wanted to have someone sort of uh, uh, argue with him about it a little bit uh, just to see, you know, if he still felt it was okay for him to be working on an F2P game because he had some concerns about it himself, uh, uh, I guess it would say. 
So for those of you who are interested in those sorts of things and those sorts of discussions, we will be doing that um, immediately after Handmade here on Thursday. So please plan on uh, checking out the stream that day and staying for that. Or if you uh, don't have time to check the stream and just want uh, to catch that, uh, it should be starting at about 8.30 uh, Pacific Daylight Time. That's about it. Uh, until uh, next time, have fun programming, and I will see you guys on the internet. Take it easy, everyone.